All right, welcome back. So in this lecture, we'll take a look at a typical one line and three line drawings showing the connections for transformer protection relays. Now this drawing that we have over here on the screen is for a typical distribution substation. So in here, we can see the transformer protection relays, the bus bar protection relays, the feeder protection relays. And so these are the SEL487E over here for transformer protection, the SEL487B here for bus bar protection, and then all the different 751 relays for the different feeders in the substation. Now these types of drones are oftentimes called a protection one-line drone. Now the reason behind that is that in addition to being just a typical one-line drone for the substation, these types of drones also include the relays and their protection elements as shown over here. Something else that you might see on these drones are the CT and the PT connections. So for example, in this example, you can see over here, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit over here. You can see over here that we have a 51 P and an 87 element for the 47 E. So that's indicating that we have a time over current element, a phase element, as well as a current differential element implemented in the SEL 47 E relay that's doing the transformer protection. And again, notice here that we have perhaps the most popular transform protection relay used in the United States, which is the Schweitzer SEL487E relay. Now, there are a few key pieces of information that we can gather from this protection one-line drone. First, we can see that we have two CTs connected to the SEL487E relays, and we have two relays, one for each transformer. So for example, for this one over here on the left, you can see that we have one CT over here on the high side of the transformer. And then if you follow this line over here, you can see that we have an other CT over here, again, for the 47E, in this case, on the low side of the transformer. So these two CTs are what we call wrapping the transformer, meaning we have one on the high side and one on the low side. And so that way we can see currents flowing both ways into the transformer and out of the transformer as well, but both sides so that we can implement a current differential scheme. Now notice here again that since this is a step-down transformer in a distribution substation, and in this case it is stepping the voltage down from 230 kV to 13.8 kV, the low side current will be higher than the high side current. And again, we talked about this in the previous lecture, where if we have a lower voltage for the same transformer rating, we would expect a higher current because power input and power output to the transformer should remain constant. Minus, of course, some minor losses inside of the transformer. And so this is why the CT ratio is 400 to 5 on the high side and 5,000 to 5 on the low side. And again, you can see that over here, we have 400 to 5 and 5,000 to 5 on the low side. Now these in this case are what we call a multi-ratio CT. What this means is that there are multiple ratios available within that CT. And again, CT stands for current transformer. And although here we're using the maximum ratio for each CT, just know that there's multiple ratios that you can use within that CT. So for example, for this high side CT over here, that is a 400 to 5 CT. You can see that we have the 400 twice. We have it over here and over here. What this means is that it's a 400 to 5 CT, so 400 amps flow on the primary conductors that go to the transformer. We will get 5 amps on the secondary of the CT flowing into the relay. Now in this case, again, what this means, 400 to 400 to 5, what that means is that we have a 400 to 5 maximum ratio CT, and we're using the 400 to 5 tap within that CT. So just another point, that I wanted to make over here, just in case it's a little bit confusing why we have 400 slash 400 slash five. That means it's a 400 to five CT, but we're using the 400 to five tab as well. Now, the other thing that we can see in this drone is the vector group for the transformer. And you can see that over here where we have D, Y, and one. This tells us the connections for the three phase transformer. And again, in the previous lecture, we talked about Y and Delta connections for transformers. In this case, the vector group again is the D, Y, and one. What this means is that the high side is connected in a delta configuration. That's what the capital D stands for. And the low side is connected in a Y configuration. That's what the letter Y lowercase means. And the N means that the neutral is brought out and it's a grounded Y in this case. We can also see that we have a one at the end. What this means is that the high side currents will lead the low side currents by 30 degrees. This is very, very important since the current differential scheme that we're going to implement in an SEL 487E relay will need to compensate for this. So again, we talked about this previously, but the delta connection on the transformer introduces a phase shift 
across the transform. So currents on the high side on A phase, let's say, are not going to have the same angle as the currents on the low side A phase. In this case, the high side is going to be leading the low side by 30 degrees. That's what this one over here tells us. And of course, when we implement the settings, we need to compensate for that phase shift in addition to compensating for the different current magnitudes. Now, on that note, we can also see here that we have, again, the protection elements that are used in this example substation. So for the 47E relay, we have the 87, this one over here, which is a current differential scheme, and a 51P, which is a phase time over current element. These are the two elements that for this example are used. And so in a protection wildline drawing like this, you'll see that not only you have the relays and the CT connections and oftentimes the PT connections as well, but you'll also have information about what each relay is doing. In this case, since we're using microprocessor relays, they can have many different functions. They can have current differential, time over current, that time over current can be phase or ground. You can have volts per hertz, negative sequence, all types of different protection elements. So this drone will give you that information, which elements specifically are implemented in this device. Now, in this case, we have, again, the 87 element, which is a current differential, which provides a high speed tripping for the transformer. So that will usually trip within a few cycles of detecting a fault. And we also have a backup phase time over current element that provides backup to the current differential scheme, but also provides protection against transformer overload conditions and also backs up faults further down in the substation, which could be either in the substation bus bar or in the feeders that come out of the substation. And again, just like I mentioned before, we can have many different protective elements. We can have many more implemented in modern microprocessor based relays like the 47E, for example, we could have an instantaneous phase over current element. So that would be denoted over here like a 50P, 50 stands for instantaneous, and then the P's for phase. And we could also have like other miscellaneous transformer protection elements, such as a volts per hertz, for example, which is a 24 element and maybe even external trips that come into the device as inputs, and then the device asserts its output to trip the transformer off. And those could be, for example, like an external sudden pressure device that gives a signal to the relay that there's a fault in the transformer, and then the relay uses that information to trip. Now, again, the key point that I want to make here is that this drawing will tell you not only how the transformer protection relays are connected, so you can see, for example, the CT connections over here, but it will also tell you what protective elements are expected from these relays. Now, another important piece of information here is the CT ratios that we talked about and also the polarities of the CTs. So let's talk a little bit more about that as well. So you can see, for example, and let me get rid of some of these arrows over here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more into this CT over here. So notice over here that we have the polarity marks for the CT over here. This is very important information because it tells us which way the current transformer is quote unquote looking. So in this case, the CTs are again, quote unquote, looking into the transformer, meaning that current that flows into the transformer in this case, into our differential zone will be seen as positive current in the relay. And here for that, we're assuming that these CTs are wired into the polarity marks of the relay connections as well. So just like the CTs have polarity marks, the relay also has polarity marks. So I'm assuming over here that the CTs are brought into the polarity mark of the relay as well. And so the point that I'm making here is that notice here that we have the polarity marks over here and over here for the low side CT. So what this means then is that current that flows into the transformer from the high side will be seen as current flowing into also the polarity mark on the relay, which will be seen as positive. Same thing happens for this low side CT current flowing into the transformer will flow out of the CT and into the polarity mark of the relay. And again, I'm assuming here that we're connecting the CTs to the polarity marks of the relay. So this is important because it really needs to know, okay, which way is into the transformer or out of the transformer. And again, the point that I'm trying to make here is that this drawing will also give you that information. It will also show you which ways the CTs are quote unquote looking. Now, one last piece of information that we need from here that is not shown on a one line drawing, of course, is the three phase connections. That's also very important. So I'm going to switch over to another drawing that I'm going to be providing in the lecture resources. And what I want to show is these connections over here. So notice over here again that we have a three phase transformer. The high side is on this side. In this case, it's a 69 kV high side and the low side is 12.47 kV. 
So the right side in this case is the high side, low side is the left side. Now this drawing again is an example of a three line drawing that shows the CT connections of a transformer protection scheme. Now, as I mentioned before, notice here that the CTs are connected in a Y configuration. I mentioned this previously where I mentioned that most modern microprocessor relays can compensate for phase shift and different CT connections. So typically in a modern microprocessor based relay, you will see that the CTs, the current transformers that feed currents into the protection relay are wired in a Y configuration. You can see that clearly over here, for example, where all the non-polarity marks of the CT are connected together over here. Now, again, this is because modern microprocessor relays can compensate for the delta connection on the transformer. Now, one thing that I want to mention, though, is that in older electromechanical protective relays, the delta compensation was done with the CTs by wiring them in a delta configuration, in this case, for the Y side connection. So in other words, for this example, if we had an electromechanical relay, which is not a smart device and cannot compensate for the phase shift, via settings in the device, we would wire the low side CT, in this case, the one in the Y winding of the power transformer. So this side over here, we would wire the CTs on that side that feed into the relay in a Delta configuration. Now, what we would do for the high side in this case, since it's connected in a Delta configuration, we would still wire the CTs in a Y configuration. So essentially what I'm saying here is that we would compensate for the phase shift in this Delta Y transformer simply by wiring the CT on the low side in a delta configuration and the CT on the high side in a Y configuration. So the CT connections effectively are opposite of the power transformer connections. So that then that cancels out the delta effect of the power transformer connections. So let me repeat that because that's a little bit confusing. And again, this applies only to older electromechanical relays, which we're not going to talk about in this course, but I did want to mention this because this is an important point. If you had a relay that cannot compensate internally for the phase shift across the transformer, like you have in an electromechanical relay, you would have to compensate for that phase shift in the wiring of the CTs themselves. So in this case, where we have a high side delta and a low side Y connection for the power transformer, so these connections over here, we would wire the CTs in opposite. So this CT over here, if that was the one that was going to the transformer relay, we would wire that CT in a delta configuration and wire this CT over here in a Y configuration. So essentially they're opposite of the power transformer connection. And what that does is it cancels out the effect of the phase shift in the transformer itself. Now I'm going to be providing this drawing, but this drawing also has an accompanying one line drawing, which is shown over here. And these drones are part of an excellent paper from the IEEE PSRC, where PSRC is a power system relaying committee. And these drones come from a paper called Schematic Representation of Power System Relaying. So I would highly, highly recommend that you read that paper. It's a very good paper that goes over the different types of drones that you might see associated with a protection scheme. Not specific to Transformer, that paper talks about drones for protection relaying in general. So it's a very, very good paper. I would highly recommend you read that. All right, so that's the drones that you might expect to see to be able to develop a protection scheme. In the next lectures, we're gonna talk about some of the most commonly used protection elements for transformer protection.